Let us give our confession of faith, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Let us greet each other. May we have the paradoxical walk of faith. So today's message is titled, Believe and Proclaim. And today we conclude our message of the Gospel of Mark. And starting next week, we'll begin an exposition on First John, one common feature of the four Gospels, including Mark, is that their endings all point to the same conclusion. Simply put, Jesus gave his disciples the vision and mission to evangelize the 237 nations and 5,000 tribes. To go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. The book of Acts, which follows the gospels, also begins with this covenantal vision. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And that's the conclusion of the four book of gospel. And as children of God and disciples of Christ Jesus, fulfilling this mission of saving souls is the essence and core of our walk of faith. So why would you judge if you have good walk of faith or bad walk of faith? Can you really judge the faith that's invisible? So how much passion you have for saving souls and the interest you have, how much do you have? Are you really living the life of all in? That is why our church is currently carrying out an evangelism movement called One More. The title One More was inspired by the power of One More, a conclusion I shared in my New Year's message last year. So, experience the power of one more. There is mystery within it. The Power of One More is also the title of a book in which Ed Millett, who was once so poor that he couldn't even pay his electricity bills after marriage, shares the secret to his incredible success, which was the power of one more. So he emphasized when your competitors are satisfied and stop when everyone else gives up and steps back. Take just one more step forward. Then you will discover hidden opportunities for success that others haven't seen. So call them one more time. Try to uh, try one more time and try to flip it over one more time. And to those people, success will come find them. So success comes to those who make one more call, visit one more time, persuade one more time, think one more time, try one more time, or reconsider one more time. When this one more accumulates, you eventually reach an explosive tipping point and your life starts to change dramatically. We're applying this concept in the field of evangelism through the one more evangelism movement. So I work out at the gym, and my coach tells me to do 30 minutes of workout. And I did uh, uh, for 30 times, and he tells me 30, do 30 times. And I, I did 30 times, but then my coach will tell me, oh, do just one more. And he tells me, uh, I lost all my strength. But then that one more time will 
it's a it's a plus for you to really strengthen yourself if you look closely Jesus himself was the one who changed the world through the power of one more after his resurrection he came to the disciples who had denied betrayed after his resurrection he came to the disciples who had denied betrayed and abandoned him and challenged them one more time which ultimately changed the era after his resurrection Jesus didn't ascend to heaven immediately instead he appeared to the disciples and taught them about the kingdom of God for 40 days So they made mistake and they had hidden scars, but then Jesus healed and restored their hidden wounds and equipped them with his word. He imprinted on them the spiritual purpose and direction of expanding God's kingdom. And from that time on, they did not have any betrayer. To carry out this ministry, he said on the day of Pentecost he will send the Holy Spirit so walk of faith it's important to go to church but then as you're living a busy life you must experience the Holy Spirit so you must be baptized by Holy Spirit you must be guided by the Holy Spirit and you must be able to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit so you always listen to people, but there is a detailed word that God gives me during the time of worship as you're praying. He talks to me. So you must experience the Holy Spirit. And, and after the disciples realized the Holy Spirit and realized the fact that God is with them, nothing became their problems. So their weaknesses and inabilities were no longer obstacles. Empowered by the Holy Spirit's power, they began to conquer the mission fields. The living works of how the field was transformed through only Christ, only the kingdom of God, and only the filling of the Holy Spirit are recorded in the book of Acts. I pray that all members of Yeowon Church will be used by God in this amazing work through the challenge of one more. Believe today's message title and proclaim it. So why is missions and evangelism why are missions and evangelism burdensome for you? Should we only talk about the knowledge of the world? What should the church talk about? It's a place where we save lives. Why did Jesus come? Did he come to make miracles? The purpose of his coming is to save us. Why do we live? What's the purpose of living? Why? What's the pur purpose of the church? If you do not receive grace, if you don't believe, missions and evangelisms are burdensome are a burden for you. That is why you must believe and proclaim it. Those who believe will be able to do evangelism missions and can go to camp. So do you believe or not? It will take place according to your faith. Do I believe or not? It's because I don't believe it it's burden it's quite burdensome for me so let's say you have cancer what would you do for the rest of your life so they say that you have three months what are you gonna do for that three months what are you gonna do for that three months so you can repent everything you can organize everything you can wrap up everything 
And you must stand before God by sharing the gospel with everyone that you meet. And out of all the cancer patients that we have at our church, there is an elder who can only live by the end of this month. And I told the elder, there is God's planned time schedule for each and every in one of us. So live boldly and stand before God boldly. So let's say we die tomorrow. What are you going to do? So we talk of other people, we gossip, we criticize. Are we going to do that? So the, the purpose of the existence of church, whatever we do, we do it for the glory of God. Therefore, I bless you in the name of the Lord that you will all become absolute disciples of Christ, expanding the four grand tents. So point number one, absolute faith concerning the resurrection. Mark 16 starts with the word concerning the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In fact, believing that Jesus was resurrected after his death on the cross is the core of faith of Christianity. If there were only the sufferings and death of Jesus, and there were not Jesus' resurrection, our lives would have been in absolute despair. We'll we will completely be deceived. That is why Apostle Paul stated this truth in detail in 1 Corinthians 15, in verse, in verse 14, and if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain, in verse 17, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins, and in verse 19, if in Christ we have hope in this life only, we're all people most to be pitied. But then verses 20 and 22 conveys an unexpected message. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Amen? We'll be saved. We'll be alive. We'll live eternally. Because we have the true hope uh, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we have gained the strength to win against the world of sin filled with darkness through the power of Jesus Christ. So you should not live like non-believers. So the gospel, the Christ that you listen to, you must believe the greatest power that the gospel and Christ have. However, you can see in verse 1 of the main passage how uneasy it was to believe in the news of resurrection by looking at the fact that Magdalene Mary, Mary the mother of James, who is the son of Alphaeus, Salome, the mother of another James, and John were extremely surprised and scared when they heard the news of Jesus' resurrection. And actually, it could be understood that they can be surprised. However, the disciples who had heard Jesus repeated resurrection messages appear so they appear ridiculously more serious although they heard the news of the resurrection of Jesus from Magdalene Mary they didn't believe it at all they totally didn't expect it and they, are, they were Jesus' disciples. 
Jesus appeared before these disciples. Read verse 14. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table, and he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. So the hardness of heart. They listened to the gospel so many times, but they did not believe it. So when the 11 disciples were gathered, Jesus appeared. So you might all have and face problems, but then there is only one reason to that. That is because you don't have faith. There is no excuse. Because of that person, because of our husband, because of my son. But that's being deceived by Satan. You must realize that I don't have the faith of believing Almighty God. So if you don't have faith, your heart becomes hard. So the hardness of heart in Greek is sclerocardia, which means heart hard-heartedness, which denies any sure evidence. This means that disciples were all captured by biased minds, prejudice, and stereotypes. They were all captured by their own thoughts. The fact that they were centered in Genesis 3 was the reason why they couldn't change or grow anymore. Do you know why faith do not, doesn't grow? That's because you're centered with your own thoughts. So there is no change or grow, and there's no answer. That is why you only speak of disbelief. That's because you, didn't, you did not receive any answers. Spiritual growth starts only when you put down the hardness of your heart. So you might say, I don't, my heart is not hard. But then that's because, but then what's? The hardness of the heart is not believing in God and not having faith. So you must believe the word as it is, but then you have this hardness of your heart. It's not your own. It is important. It's, it is very important to know how much you are imprinted with the word of the gospel, not your own thoughts. How much rooted and natured you are within His word is so important. So, before speaking, you must organize with the word of God, and don't just fall into the level of the world. So there is an idiom that says humans fall for the same thing. You might think people won't fall for the same thing, but they actually do. When you look at this spiritually, there you constantly repeat, you fall for the same problem. So what can be the best example is the disbelief towards God. So you have this repeated religious life and repeated disbelief. So the more important you are, the more power you have, Satan works. So the powerless people, the people who can't make a huge influence, Satan does not attack them. But then, if Satan thinks, oh, this person has a lot of influence on this church, then he works to deceive them. He works to make them not receive grace, and he tests them. So people who don't have any thoughts, they don't fall into these trials, but then you think too much. That's the mas masterpiece of Satan. So Satan tries to 
distract you from expanding the kingdom of God. That is why churches do not have any power and they cannot grow in number. So the more power you have, Satan attacks you even more. So if you fall into this belief, there is no way you'll grow. And this is why Satan used unbelief when he attacks us. So you don't listen to God's servant. You don't listen to the words of God. So what was the difference between Moses and the Israelites before crossing the Red Sea? What was the difference between Joshua and the Israelites before conquering Canaan? How about Caleb and the Israelites when they were standing in front of Anak? The difference was that Israelites had unbelief in God's word. So how much do you believe in the word of God? Or do not believe? So that's the difference between faith and unbelief. The Protestant reformer John Calvin even said, the power of the gospel is unlimited, but only the believer will see it work. So the power of the word is so amazing. Just one word so the whole creation could be gone, but then God's word will last. And the power is unlimited. So only those who believe will see it work. Only the believer will see it work. So you'll see God's glory when you believe in it. So be even if you go to church, if you don't have this faith, if you don't have this belief, you won't see it work. You will see God's glory when you believe it. So you realize that is Jesus Christ and that Jesus Christ solved all my problems. And you'll be able to experience that. And once that takes place, that's the end. You can only You can only experience the scale of God only when you face a covenantal challenge with absolute faith. So only when you obey the word of God. So Satan continues to deceive you through people and he deceives you so that you can't remember the word of God and you can't share the word of God and you know that better than anyone else. So when you believe in the word, despite your level, you'll be able to experience God's scale. So how can that person change so much? How are, how are they being used so much? How, how do they have so much power? That's the evidence that's shown because they believed. So God's scale. So we live in such a tiny land and you can imagine how tiny our scale is. So we were even thankful that we could eat three meals a day. So we lived in the age where we couldn't even eat three meals a day. So see the difference between God's scale and our scale. So I bless you in the name of the Lord that you may all believe the authority of resurrection and the power of the gospel and enlarge the tent of your field as a witness of Christ. Point two, the work that is revealed when one proclaims. In verse 15 reads, And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Jesus rebukes the disciples for their faithfulness, faithlessness and stubbornness, but gives them another chance. 
So this word, the Great Commission, is not merely for the disciples, but for all believers who believe in the power of Jesus Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. Specifically, the phrase, to all people, is pashete kutise in Greek, which means to every creature. The gospel is not limited to one particular people or group, but must be proclaimed to all nations too. And we always say this to all the 237 nations and 5,000 tribes. People do not know how many countries are in the world. They don't know that they we. They don't know that we have 5,000 tribes. And just like how the elder prayed earlier, may we, may our Yewon Church become an Antioch Church of this age. Amen. And the elder's prayer was so powerful that I am empowered by his prayer. That is why the representative prayer is so important. That is why last week, during the Chuseok holiday, So 264 members of our church went to a multi-camp in Mindoro, Antipolo, and Palawan, Philippines. So it's a poorest Asian country. Back in the days, they lived, they were wealthier than our country, so they helped us. So, the 264 members of our church went to that country, Philippines. In this most important holiday in Korea, they gave their week, they gave their time. So may all the people who devoted themselves in the camp may be filled with God's Holy Spirit and God has written your names in God's book of blessing. So I remember, God will say that I remember your devotion and your offering and your resolution to save lives. So do you think God will forget that you spent a whole week to do camp? In fact, the core of God's choice of the Israelites and the covenant made on Mount Sinai is the evangel evangelization of 237 nations and 5,000 peoples. In Exodus 19.5, Now therefore, if you if you indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to all, speak to the people of Israel. God chose the people of Israel to be a nation of priests to the nations. But unfortunately, the Israelites lost sight of this essential mission and became preoccupied with being chosen. So they didn't do, because they were, their sense of nationhood became a poison. So their chosen people ideology 
became a poison for them. The Babylonian captivity, the Roman colonization, the wanderings, wanderings afterward, and even now, they are still missing the point. So Iraq, Iran, the Middle East, Israel, they're always on the news about this war, about these battles, because they lost hold of the gospel. They don't know why their people, their nation, had no choice but to be like that. So if you don't receive grace, you don't have the answer to your incidents, your problems. That's why you continue in the suffering. That is why we should use Israel's failed history as a counterexample. Verses read 17. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they'll recover. Jesus is saying that he will give them the power they need to fulfill their mission of spreading the gospel. But you must hold on to the word. So don't test God, but you must hold on to the word. Don't test God that I'll, you'll, you'll survive even if you drink poison. So don't do that at home. That's what the heresies do. I will look at the intent of the words. Don't go home. Don't go home and do strange experiments. The reason Jesus says this is to guard, guide, and protect the evangelist's steps. So no matter what kind of poison you take, you will not be you will not be hurt, and God guides and protects and guard the evangelist steps. So I've been traveling all over the world, but then by the grace of God, there wasn't a single incident for the past 15 years. So for the 15 years, I went all over the world for camp, but then there wasn't a single issue. There wasn't a single issue. God protected me. So because I had this pure heart to spread the gospel, I could stand as a witness of God's protection. So all of the camp team members, may they come back, may they come back all healthy and all be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I received a report for Palawan camp and I was able to realize that God has really God had really protected them. So in the name of Jesus Christ the demons are cast out and tongues are spoken so that people in 15 different countries can hear the gospel. So there is speaking of tongue that the heavenly tongue that people cannot understand, but then there is also tongue, speaking tongue in a different language so that the people of different nations can understand and receive, receive gospel. And various diseases are healed in Jesus' name, as in Acts 2. So when I started church, I've never experienced healing other people. But, but then, as I was doing this ministry, the people who are filled with evil spirit will come 
and in the name of Jesus Christ, the demons will cast out, and I prayed for them, and they'll be healed. So, in pioneering a new church, I experienced God's work and was involved in missions. So there are witnesses at our church. So people who pioneer the new church with me, they know. They know this miracle. They know this work. But then that's the tool for spreading the gospel. So Jesus healed so many ill people and he cast out demons, but then that's an evidence to relay the gospel. So you must know this is not a point. Such works are only a tool and method to open the door for spreading the gospel, healing numerous sick, casting out demons, and even giving life to the dead. Jesus did all of those these to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom more, effic more effectively. Therefore, the main point is to have faith in the resurrection and proclaim Jesus Christ in the field. In verse 20, and they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. You can see the Lord worked with the various signs to make it more effective when disciples went, to, went out to preach. There is an order. When we go out to the field, we do not go with abilities to create various signs. The Holy Spirit works within us when we go out to the field and proclaim the gospel regardless of our level and ability. That is why we must restore our fields and you can feel any kind of fear when you go out to the field but that's thoughts given by Satan he continues to distract us and there may be a feeling of hesitation but then that's a weed that Satan sowed inside your thoughts when you look at Joshua in chapter 3, when Joshua and the Israelites crossed the Jordan River, unlike usual, the waves of the Jordan River overflowed. However, you must remember that the Jordan River was split when the priests with the Ark of the Covenant soaked their feet in water. If you're tied to the thought of whether it will, spill, it will split or not, you, then you cannot cross it. Environmental difficulties are not the problem, but faith is the problem. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. It is a final favor and demand of Jesus. Just give it a try. Just give it a try. Follow the camp. Follow the camp team. Follow the the assistant pastors, then you will be able to have faith. Then you will see evidence that you will be revived and the other person will be revived and your field will be revived. I pray that all the church members of the Yewon Church in the name of the Lord will become the main figure in the changing field. In conclusion, there's a saying, there are three thoughts that go with every action. The first, the first thought is from God. The second thought is from me. The third is from the devil. So there are three thoughts. And what does it mean? Complicating things, complicating does not come from God. So complication does not come from God. So 
The first thing that made you realize the thing that came to you as Rema when you heard God's word is the answer, is God's voice. So when you listen to the word of God, you must obey immediately. But then if you're hesitating, if you keep delaying, delaying, you cannot really taste the blessings God has prepared. When you delay, unbelief creeps in. Satan's capture of such times. I hope you all have the faith to decide immediately on God's word. Because if you delay, you cannot taste God's blessings. If you're hesitant, if you think over and over, you cannot taste God's work. If you delay it, disbelief comes in. And Satan captures of such times. So may all of you have faith to decide immediately on God's word. Pastor Oswald Chambers, the author of a famous meditation collection called My Utmost for His Highness, His Highest, made this confession. I cannot give up on anyone because it is so amazing that God has changed me. He changed a person like me, and, and a being like me is changed and is being used by God. There is no one who is worse than me, so anyone can change. So may all of you have this challenge of one more. There are definitely souls in your field to be revived when you challenge one more time. When I read reports from the evangelism team, the family line evangelism team, I read that my father, I never believed that my father will listen to the word of God. But then as you pray, the disbeliefs cast away and God works through you. So may all of you challenge. So do not give up. You might say that person will never be saved. But then do not give up on anyone. That if you give up, then that's disbelief. To save, to save people, that's in God's hand. I bless you all in the name of the Lord to become God's people who do not give up anyone but save them through the covenantal challenge of one more time during the second half of 2024. Dear God, we thank you so much for saving us. And we thank you so much for making us citizens of heaven. So as we hear your word every week, would you give us the faith, the overflowing faith from your word? And we still have so many suffering souls around us, and whoever we meet during our day, May we, may we save them as God's people. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.